Hello and welcome to Speedy Medical. This is the second part of the video on penicillins and in this video we are going to cover the subgroups of penicillins and what are their antimicrobial activities and also we'll talk about the side effects of penicillin. Also if you haven't watched the first video I'll request you to watch the first video first and then come and resume this video. So let's start the video. So if we talk about the subgroups are the subtypes of penicillin, there are actually four subgroups of penicillin. The first subgroup is called as the narrow spectrum penicillin or they are also called as generation 1 penicillin. The second subgroup is called as very narrow spectrum penicillin. The third subgroup is called as broad spectrum penicillin and the fourth subgroup is called as extended spectrum penicillin. Now you might be thinking why these are called as narrow spectrum or broad spectrum or extended spectrum. I'll explain this in a moment. Now let's first consider the narrow spectrum penicillin. In the narrow spectrum penicillin we have two type of penicillins which are the penicillin G and penicillin V. So we have the penicillin G and penicillin V. These penicillin G and penicillin V are also called as the natural penicillin as they are naturally obtained from the fungus. So these are the generation 1 or the narrow spectrum penicillin. We'll not talk about the spectrum, we'll talk about the spectrum in a separate chart. If we talk about the very narrow spectrum penicillin, the very narrow spectrum penicillin, they contain the penicillin like nephcillin, methicillin and oxacillin. So you have to remember it by a mnemonic like NMO and I don't know what this NMO mean but I remembered this, these penicillin via this mnemonic so I'll also advise you to remember these via this. So NMO means we have nephicillin, methicillin and oxacillin. Now if we consider these narrow spectrum penicillin, there is one another characteristic of these penicillins that is they are actually beta lactamase sensitive. So the narrow spectrum penicillin are beta lactamase sensitive that means they can be destroyed by those bacteria which produce the beta lactamase. So these are beta lactamase sensitive. But the very narrow spectrum penicillin they are beta lactamase resistance. It means that these antibiotics they will not be destroyed by those bacteria which are producing the beta lactamase enzyme. So naturally they can act to they can act on those bacteria which are beta lactamase producing and hence their antimicrobial activity will also be against those bacteria which are producing the beta lactamase enzyme. Now in the broad spectrum penicillin we have the penicillins which are called as amino penicillin. Now this amino penicillin it is a group okay so amino penicillin it is a group and it contains the drugs like amoxicillin and ampicillin you might have heard these words like amoxicillin and ampicillin again you have to remember that these broad spectrum penicillins they are also beta lactamase sensitive which means they will be destroyed by the bacteria which are producing beta lactamase enzyme and hence these penicillin will not act on the bacteria producing the beta lactamase enzyme. The fourth generation is called as the extended spectrum penicillin and in the extended spectrum penicillin we have penicillins like Ticarcillin and piperacillin. So we have the drugs like ticarcillin and piperacillin. So again these extended spectrum penicillins they will also be beta lactamase sensitive. So this was all about the subgroups of penicillin. But I'll give you a hook that will help you to remember these beta lactamase what are the beta lactamase sensitive and what are the beta lactamase resistance. See guys, we start from narrow spectrum penicillin. The narrow spectrum penicillins are beta lactamase sensitive. Now, these are beta lactamase sensitive. That means they will be destroyed by the bacteria which are producing the beta lactamase enzyme. So let's consider to make such penicillin which have a narrow spectrum but they are beta lactamase resistant. So that's why we have the very narrow spectrum penicillin. 
Now in these penicillin, we have compromised with the spectrum of the bacteria on which they can act. But we have gained another property that is called as beta lactamase resistance. Now in the broad spectrum antibiotics like amoxicillin and ampicillin, we have again increased the spectrum of the bacteria over which the penicillin will act. But in doing so, we have decreased its resistance. So naturally, they are beta lactamase sensitive. Again, in extended spectrum antibiotics, the same concept will apply. That is, although we have increased their spectrum, but we have decreased their activity or resistance against the beta lactamase enzyme. So naturally, they will again be beta lactamase sensitive. So you have to uh, spend some time on these subgroups and classification so that it goes directly into your mind and gets retained over there. It will take time, but uh, after two three revisions it will be established in your mind so with this we have to cover the spectrum of bacteria which will be killed by these various generations of penicillin so if we talk about the generation 1 penicillin just remember that the generation 1 penicillin will act against various types of cocci like streptococci pneumococci and meningococci and also these will act against the bug which causes syphilis that is the Triponema palladium. Just remember the cocci and the Triponema palladium and you are done with the spectrum of generation 1 penicillin. Now as you know that the generation 2 penicillins they are the very narrow spectrum penicillin and we have created these penicillin just to act on those bacteria which are beta lactamase producing. So naturally, these will have a very narrow spectrum, especially those bacteria which are producing the beta lactamase enzyme and therefore the spectrum of these antibiotics is Staphylococci bacteria because the Staphylococci bacteria, they produce the beta lactamase. So therefore, the generation 2 penicillin, they will act on the Staphylococci bacteria. So since the generation 3 penicillins, they are also called as broad spectrum penicillin. Therefore, naturally, they will cover a broad spectrum of bacteria. And as a result, they will kill the cocci, but not the Staphylococci because Staphylococci is being killed by generation 2 penicillin. Also, they will be active against the microbes, gram-negative microbes like E. coli, Haemophilus influenzae, Listeria monocytogenes, Borrelia and H. pylori. So these are the various microbes against which the generation 3 penicillin will be active and I have made a mnemonic for these bacteria or these bugs and I remember them via this term called as B L E double H. I don't know what this term mean but I use this term to remember so you have also to use this term to remember. So B stands for Borrelia. East L stands for Listeria monocytogenes, E stands for E. coli, H stands for Haemophilus influenzae and uh, last H stands for H. pylori and cocci is also there but not the Staphylococci. So if we talk about the generation 4 penicillin, it is called as extended spectrum penicillin and it is mainly active against the gram negative rods. So one of the most important gram negative rod is the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So naturally these generation 4 penicillins like piperacillin and ticaracillin, they will cover the Pseudomonas. So these are the broader antimicrobial spectrum of all the generations of penicillin and again I'll request you to spend some time on these spectrum and try to learn them as many times as possible and it will help in retaining them for a long term. So quickly we'll cover the side effects of penicillin. The first important side effect is hypersensitivity reactions. So when we take these drugs, in some people, they may cause hypersensitivity reaction. And these hypersensitivity reactions, they may be in the form of rash or they may be some serious side effects like angioedema and atricaria. 
The next important side effect is GI distress and it can present in the form of nausea, vomiting or diarrhea. Now this is because as these antibiotics are taken via the oral route, they may interact with the various microbes which are naturally present in our elementary canal and this will lead to dysregulation of the microbes over there and it will present as nausea, vomiting or diarrhea. So these are the broader side effects of penicillin.